In the course of growing my laser business, I feel like I'm always learning new things about light burn. And in the process of doing that, sometimes I'll just see a new tool or feature and I'll just think to myself, wow, why isn't everybody talking about this? This is such a powerful thing within the software. And so today we're gonna to talk about just that. Some of the tools that I've seen inside of Lightburn that I think are really underrated. So let's get started right now. So the first feature we'll cover here is the adding notes tool. So you can actually go up here to file and then there's this little button that says show notes. And what that does, it just opens a simple little text box here. But the reason this can be so useful is because if you're running a laser business, you might want to have one person designing and then another person building, which is typically what we do in my business, or maybe you even have an employee and you want to be able to send them the file and have them know exactly what to do. And so just to take this a step further, say for example, you're working on a product like this, which is just a cute little closet divider thing for kids. And you can have a, a few different options of the different types of wood or material you might make this out of. So you might have a note on here that says something like this, cut out of maple, one quarter inch plywood, or maybe you do cherry, maybe you do walnut, you get the idea. Or if for this particular job, you need to adjust an engrave or a cut setting, maybe you have a note that's something like adjust the engrave power up by five. So these are the types of notes that you might have here. And by default, what you have with a note like this is uh, you save it and this toggle by default is off. This says show on file open, which means the only way that that note is visible is if somebody actively goes up here and they go, okay, open, uh, file and then show notes and then I get my project notes that I just saved a moment ago. But what makes this really powerful for a workflow is if you enable this toggle, the show on file open toggle, and that means that when you open this file, that will come up as a pop-up on the screen. So I'll show you what that looks like. There you go, I just reopened the file and as you can see, as soon as I did that, this little project notes pop-up came up on the screen, which could be really powerful as part of your process if you have one person designing and another person running the job, or perhaps you just want to make sure that you don't forget to do these things later, which I know from personal experience can definitely be a problem. And I wanted to give just a quick shout out to the Computer Creations channel, which I'll link in the description below, because I first learned this tip from that guy, and he actually makes some really good tutorials on Lightburn that I think cover some things that you don't see in a lot of other places here on the internet. So just a shout out to him. And the second feature that I think just doesn't get talked about enough is the checklist feature. So how you can access that is by going to device settings, which is this little icon with the wrench up here. And then you can go all the way down to the bottom right where it says enable job checklist. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a reminder pop-up that comes on when you try to start a job. And so I'm just going to enable that and then I'm going to edit the contents and so you can see the type of reminders that you might want to have in here. These are just examples. So you might need a reminder to turn on your exhaust fan before you start the job, put on safety glasses, and my personal nemesis, turn on the air assist, which I used to forget all the time. And so having this type of reminder as a pop-up can be really useful. And let me show you what this looks like. And now that I've saved that checklist, I'm just going to click start here as if I were actually going to run this on my laser. And then you get this little pop-up. So you can see it's exactly what I entered in that box. It's turn on exhaust fan, put on safety glasses, turn on air assist. And then I can be like, oh yeah, I got to do those things real quick. And then I can go do them. And as soon as I'm all set and ready to go, all I have to do is click yes. And then that's going to actually start the laser. So I think this next feature is actually pretty underrated and it's the trace feature. And before you say anything, I know there are a lot of people talking about the trace feature. I know it's a popular thing in a lot of tutorials but I still think it's underrated just because of how powerful it is. So I just have this little JPEG image here. And for those of you who don't know, I'll just give a quick 15 second overview of what trace feature does. So if you click on this, you right click it, click trace image, you can take basically any type of image and you can turn it into a JPEG a vector image, which is what you use on your, your laser. And so there's some settings in here that I won't go into in this video, but it basically allows you to take uh, a drawing or a, an image from your, your smartphone or something like that and vectorize it. And so part of the reason this is so powerful is if you really learn how to use this really well, you can do like basically anything that you can get a good quality photo of, you can turn into a vector image with some effort. It does take some effort if the lines aren't connected. So this might be actually a little bit tricky in this, this example here because it's drawn with a crayon. And so there's lots of little gaps. It's a lot easier if the lines are nice and solid, 
But anyway, that doesn't sort of change the point that you can do a lot with this and it even allows you to take something like a hand-drawn photo or a hand-drawn note and turn it into a vector image which you then can of course engrave on things, which is something that you probably have even seen on Etsy. People do these little engravings of like handwritten recipes and notes and things like that. And so there's a lot that you can do with the trace image feature. Oh, and for those of you who wanna see what this looks like after you've done the trace to vectorize it, this is the quick version of it here. So I did the trace real quick, adjusted some of the settings and just did a few little minor cleanup things. This is kind of the two minute version. You could make it look a lot nicer if you do some additional editing, but this is basically gives you the idea. And once you have it in a vector like this, then you can go ahead and assign it to a layer and then adjust like the power and speed settings so that you can actually use it with your laser. And so if you wanted to see what this looks like and you haven't before, that's kind of the gist of it. And like I said, you can make it look nicer with a bit more time. If you want to see a deep dive into how to do the trace feature with a few different examples, let me know in the comments down below. Next up is sort of a feature within a feature. And this one can be really powerful if you run a laser business and you want to save time when you're setting up your files. And especially if you only use a few different types of materials repeatedly. So say for instance, you use a lot of eighth inch birch. Maybe you use a lot of a couple different types of acrylic. If the number of your, your materials is limited, then this can be really powerful. So say for instance, we're working on our little closet divider uh, a project here. What you can see is that I have a red layer, which is my cut layer. I have a blue one, which is engraved. And then I have this, this black one here that's the outline. Now, if we look at the corresponding layers on the right hand side here, what you can see is the labels against these. So the black one is frame. The, the blue one here is engraved birch and the red one is cut birch 1 8 inch, okay? And so if you double click on these cuts and layers, you can change those labels. You could change that name to whatever you want, and you can, of course, change the power and speed settings here. But the reason this is so powerful is that Lightburn, quote unquote, remembers it, right, uh, from this file in Lightburn to the other files. So if I were to close this and open up a brand new instance in Lightburn, it would remember what my engraved birch layer is and what my cut birch layer is and so on. And so say for instance, let's just imagine that I'm just gonna delete all of this and we'll just pretend that I'm in a brand new uh, instance of Lightburn and I wanna make a simple design. So I'm just going to make a little uh, ovally thing here and let's say I want this to be a cutout and I know that I'm going to do 1 8 birch already. Well, all I have to do is click my little layer and look, it's got my cut birch 1 8 inch right there. If you uh, want to do this in a different way, you can. You can, of course, create your own material library, which is the way some people do it. But that requires more clicks, right? You have to open the, the, the material library and then sort of copy it up to the appropriate layer. But if you're only working with a few different types of materials, I think this is going to tend to be faster for a lot of people. So this is just something to consider for your workflow. All right, last but not least is the node editor, which is this little button here, if you don't know already. And the node editor can, I think, be intimidating for some people, but don't be afraid of the node editor because it's extremely useful and it's not as hard to use as you might think. So what do we use the node editor for? So let's say we were trying to design something like this closet divider. There's a few different ways you could do it. The way that we actually made this one was to use an iPod's, uh, iPad sketch app called Procreate and then to import it into Lightburn and then trace it. So you could do something like that. However, for this one, uh, you could also design it in Lightburn. And so how you would go about doing that is maybe you would start with, with shapes. So let's just say you're trying to figure out how to make this. Maybe you start with a circle and just say, okay, I'm gonna make a circle and then I'm gonna start there. Uh, then, whoops. Uh, let me try that again. <laughs> you start there and then what you, you might think is, okay, well, I already know the weld feature. Maybe I can do something with that. Maybe I can do another circle, do something like this. And then maybe I'm just going to put this up here to get a little bit of an angle. And then I'm just going to select both of them and I'm going to weld them together or actually uh, remove one from the other, I should say. So we're going to remove one from the other like so. Uh, using this button, which I use a lot. And if you haven't seen it, that's where it is. And then you might look at this and say, yeah, that's not quite the shape I want because I want it to be a little bit more rounded around the edges. Uh, well, it's hard to do that with just welding shapes together or removing shapes from each other. But if you select this and then go to the weld tool, then you have a lot of options. So as you can see, it, uh, the node editor adds these little points on your shape. So I have all of these little points around my shape that I have here. And let's just drill in and see what these looks like, look like. So I have this little point here 
And if I select it, I can kind of move it around and do some manipulations. And there are some important shortcut keys here that you can do with these. And there's also these little toggles that allow you to move things like this. So you can see it's already becoming a little bit more rounded. And you can add additional points by clicking the I key. It's selecting where you want on the line and then clicking the, the I key. There we go, there. So you see I added another point. So now I could move this around to further manipulate my shape, right? And there's also uh, some, some additional keys that, that smooth lines. So if I wanted to go here and click S, let me just show you this. So I'm gonna click this node and then I'm gonna smooth it out, you see? So what that did is it just took this, this point between these two points and it smoothed it out. So there's a lot that you can do. And as you can see, like it's already starting to look a little bit more like this and it would take me more time to, to get it to look exactly like this, obviously, but I just wanted to give you an idea. So these nodes allow you to do a lot of manipulations. You can create almost any shape that you can think of using this node editor. And this is one that I actually am really seriously considering doing a full video into a deep dive of how to play with this and how to make something pretty interesting with the node editor. So leave me a comment if you wanna see that video and uh, I'll see how many people are interested in seeing it. So that wraps up this video about the most underrated features that I see here in Lightburn. There's a lot of stuff that you can do in Lightburn and there's a lot of things that I probably haven't mentioned here. And so if you have a favorite feature or something that you think is underrated, then let me know about it too. I love talking about this stuff. So I'll see you in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.